for you. All right, coaches, let's go ahead and start. <laughs> Now, interestingly enough, this is back to the same opponent that we looked at from 2018. These were the guys, if you remember, we threw for a kajillion yards in the first half on them. It was 35-29 at the half. Well, they ended up scoring like four times in the second half and I think shut us out, and they blew us away in the second half. We couldn't run the ball. We couldn't create any conflict on them. Um, it was just it was hard to win the game. Well, now fast forward a year later, we've had time over an offseason, and now we're in a sniffer tight end set, and look at our tight end right there. Our tight end and our right tackle, that's a great example. We are just absolutely pancaking their right defensive end. You can see he is on his back seven yards off the ball, okay? We pick him up, double team him, crush him, okay? Our running back hits outside zone. Got a little RPO on the backside. Okay, probably could have thrown the RPO there. Okay, they were off. Okay, but the quarterback elects to give it. Okay, and we gash them eight yards. Now, you might say, Coach, well, what difference does that make? Well, it's a 40 second play clock. We get that. We're running time, we're running clock. We're making a lower scoring game because these guys have athletes. They have a ton of athletes, they're a huge school. And what we're doing is we're giving ourselves a chance to win the game. Now, the very next to 10 personnel with four wide receivers, and now the quarterback is spitting the bubble screen off the pre-snap RPO out there. So now we're making the defense expand sideline to sideline. So we ran out of 11 personnel for seven and a half yards. Now we throw a bubble screen out of 10 personnel. We get five more yards, and we move the chains. There's another two minutes we could possess the ball. Third play, we immediately jump into, we still call this 21P coaches because we don't really have all true tight ends on the field, but you could make the case this is actually 23P if you wanted to. I still consider it 21P, but you could make the case it's 23P. You definitely got them all packed down in there, and we're running weak side ISO. So again, if you're starting to think about that evolutionary mind. If you're thinking about trying to make their life miserable, they've had 11 personnel outside zone RPO. They've had 10 personnel inside zone bubble. And now they're getting essentially 23P weak side ISO for another seven or eight yards. So their kids are over there having to process this, this whole big plethora of personnel groupings. Their defensive coordinators only got three timeouts per half. And I think this is the first series of the game or the second series of the game. It's very, very early. And so we're already out there doing things to them to keep them off balance, to keep them guessing. And look at their kids. Their kids aren't very aggressive now, okay, because they don't know what's coming. They have to figure out the formation, figure out the personnel group, process the type of play. There's just so much more coming at them now than there used to be. And so now you throw the added wrinkle. And by the way, this is a very young quarterback. Don't think this is a – a four-year starter. This is this kid's first varsity start at quarterback. He's a sophomore. First game, he's played varsity football, and here's a play-action bootleg out of 20. And he's going to boot out and throw a daggum touchdown. Bang. Right there. Okay, so my point to all that is, is look at all the things that we are evolving into now. Look how many formations and personnel groupings and how many wrinkles we're changing the quarterback's launch point. There's all kinds of things going on there that a defense has to process that a year earlier in more of a 1.0 mentality, we couldn't do. And I think that's a good point to bring up. The reason we were more 1.0 in 18 is I didn't get the job till June. I didn't move out here till June. So we just didn't have time. All we could be was 1.0. But it's an amazing case study because a year later, 3.0 world, maybe two and a half, two and three quarter air raid world. And now look at what you're getting. Now you're getting split zone. This team is a semifinalist in the state of Idaho in 4A. Okay, these are no slouches. We play in the best 4A league in the state by far. The five teams that made the playoffs went 5-0 and in the first round back-to-back -back years. 
uh, the conference champion in our conference beat this team and won the state championship 13-0. and So the state champion this year and the state runner-up last year both came out of our conference. So we're not doing this on the sisters of the meek here. Okay, we're doing this running Air Raid 3.0. This is our actual film from the fall. Now you're getting a naked boot. Okay, we've got a little hitch concept, changing protection. This was actually a tempo. We were in 11 personnel running a, a base RPO. Now we're in 10 personnel running a naked boot and throwing a touchdown pass against a semifinalist in the, in the state of Idaho. Okay, so again, you're, you're seeing a really, really big dichotomy of answers that we're providing here. Okay, good job on the boot. Quarterback puts it up. That's actually our tight end, but he's playing in a 10 personnel scenario, beats the corner and man coverage, touchdown. Okay, trying to give you a little bit of a, a feel, a little bit of a wrinkle for some of the stuff that we're trying to do there. Just trying to show you how much our, our kids know, how much they can learn. It's a good look at a couple of those plays. Okay, here we are against another, another big 4A school. Okay, pretty simple. Okay, quarterback making easy decisions over here. He reads this is three on three out here. Late, that corner triggers the safety's back. He could have thrown the RPO. He makes a decision to hand it off. Okay, the read key to sitting out there playing him. Just some simple pre-snap zone read football out of 10 personnel. Keeping ourselves manageable down a distance. Pretty good look at the back, staying in phase, pushing play side A, cutting into back side A. Now here we are, tight end, same side as the back. That's a little naked boot game on the very next play. Okay, so we've shown them RPO. Now we're going to get out of RPO and show them a little play action pass. Quarterback does a good job coming off the mesh, keeps the ball low. Okay, there we go. And he can accelerate out there. Okay, pop it out, keep it alive, get the first down. Easy pitch and catches. This one's a front door read. He decides to pull the ball quickly, goes to the front door. They're giving us the easy throw over there. Just take what they're giving us. It's on the field. It's fourth and six. It's fine. We have the route call. We know what we want to do. Quarterback identifies where his first down is, pitches it out, gets 10 yards, move the chains. Okay? Gives us a lot of options because our kids understand how to play the game in a multitude of tempos, personnel groupings, that sort of thing. Okay? We'll let this one play full speed. <clears throat> That's just a straight uh, sprint out protection. Okay? So our kids are able to change protections quite a bit. Um, you've seen us in RPO protection. You've seen us in boot protection. You've seen us throw front door RPO. Now you're seeing us in a sprint game. Okay, pretty good job on a little post curl route. And here was also a semifinals in the state of Idaho. So again, we're trying to show you some of these clips so that you understand these are not against bottom feeding football teams. Okay, we played some really good teams this fall and we executed the things we're discussing. Speed option. Okay able to put another little variant into the DNA of your offense, okay? This is something that, you know, I don't really see air raid teams run speed option. And you might say, well, coach, it was a three-yard gain. Yep, it was third and one. So that's the same as gain and 10. It's another pull of the chains. And it's a play we needed right there in that moment. Again, just diversifying your portfolio as an air raid 3.0 team. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, coach, uh, I thought we had a question come in. Um, hold on. That is, uh, so that going back to coach Godfrey, that's it. Remember he asked that question, you know, what could you do with your quarterback reading? And that was the old 1.0 coach Godfrey. Now you're looking at 3.0, given those answers. That's right. Okay. There we are in 11 personnel. Uh, we're actually running a very air raid concept there. Uh, that's the air raid spot route. 
Okay, they've got it all covered up. The quarterback just pulls it down, keeps the play alive. Again, look at the chains over there. Okay. We don't want to get into a shooting match with these guys. That's not a good good odds for us. So we're just trying to keep moving the chains. That's something we told our quarterbacks that week. Don't be stupid. Don't throw the ball into coverage. Just keep getting first downs and let's survive as long as we can. Okay. Uh, something else you didn't see a lot of in the Air Raid 1.0 world. This is a load option play. So our tight end is supposed to go around and get that blitzing linebacker. He misses him. The kid's coming too fast. He should go ahead and go to the next guy. He kind of gets caught in the wash. But the quarterback does a great job pulling the football right here and getting downhill. So now you're seeing some of that zone read component mixed in. That's more of what I think makes you a air raid 3.0 team. That could get six yards right there. Okay, And they're in full blitz. They got six guys coming downhill. Okay, He gets to the pull phase. And gets the ball outside. Look at that. That's a thing of beauty. Look at the quarterback's helmet. As he sees the DN disappear inside the mesh, he pulls the ball, and we've got one more than they've got. Now it's just a matter of running around the grass, get the first down, keep moving the chains. That's a pretty good job by a young sophomore quarterback right there. Now we want to give them a new look. So we immediately get down there into our 21P, and we're going to run the football. We're down there in the kill zone. We're about the six. Nobody thinks quarterback wedge right there, okay, because they see two backs in the eye, and we just wedge the ball right down in there and stick it in the end zone, okay? Again, that is what I'm talking about, about evolutionary. You don't see many air raid teams working on quarterback wedge from the four, but it's worth six points to us right there because we've worked on it and we can do it, and we believe in doing a multitude of things to people. Okay, this is against uh, a Catholic school here in Boise. Very, very well-coached football team. We're running ISO on them. Now, it doesn't look like ISO, but it's our version of it. So we're running inside zone to the left, but we're locking the zone and inserting the tight end. We're using the RPO out here to keep, and you can see very clearly in the RPO game. Our top side receiver has taken two with him. Now, I'm not great at math. But that means there's five guys we don't have to block. Since there's five guys we don't have to block, we have five linemen and a tight end inserting. There's nobody left for the back. This team was the state runner-up the year before and has won, I don't know, four, five, six Idaho 4A state championships. This is a good, well-coached football team. But we're giving them wrinkles they've not seen. There's the same play. Okay, we're tight end insert inside zone. But now I have the twins receivers over here which causes them to pull an extra defender out of the box, giving us the cushion up at the top of the screen. This is what I really like that our quarterback does, is he identifies where is the green grass in the defense, where is the cheap, low-hanging fruit where he can throw the football on the RPO and get us yards. That is a great job. And again, look how much – this is all one drive. You're just seeing us change for formations, change personnel groups. Now you're getting another zone read play. Off of the RPO action. That is air raid uh, snag out there. So there's your air raid play, but out of 10 personnel with a quarterback zone read. We're layering amounts of offense in here to make the life of the defense more and more stressful to continue moving the chains. We're moving the ball on a very well-coached defense. There's that rock formation I told you about. Now we're running one back power. See the right guard skip pull around? We're running power here. It's a great job. Quarterback this time, if you play it all the way out, there's no need to pull that football. Okay, they've got numbers out here. They are playing heavy, heavy in the RPO game. But because we're not just lining up in 10 personnel, we're giving them a different personnel group with the tight end. We've created grass in the box. Look over the left guard where we're running the ball. There's a huge bubble right there. Quarterback sees it, hands the ball off, knows he's got numbers in the box. And there is, I mean, that's great. That's power football. That is one back power RPO gashing them up the middle. There is an inline tight end counter tray. So we're pulling the guard and the inline tight end, very wing T-ish in our, in our style there, okay? Pulling those guys and running same side RPO, okay? So the counter play is coming at 
the RPO, and the quarterback likes his math, so he flips it out there. Just let that kid go play. Okay, again, we're all about snap the ball. Those in advantageous downs and distances. That gives us a chance to be competitive in a game that otherwise we would probably struggle to be overly successful. So coaches, when we talk about Air Raid 3.0, I could go on and on and on for hours. But what we're trying to do with 3.0 is I, I really want to hammer this point. We're trying to have an evolutionary mindset. You can see there in those clips, we are changing personnel groups, changing formations, changing from zone scheme to gap scheme, give plays, pull plays, throw plays, pre-snap, post-snap, throw game. We're throwing it all at you to be competitive. Now, if you have better players than everybody on your schedule, line up in 10 personnel, throw it 65 times, beat them by 70, and roll out. But I can't do that. And the vast majority of high school football teams in America can't do that. That's why we created S2A. It allows you to utilize your personnel. It allows you to be evolutionary. And it allows you to compete against people on a week-in and week-out basis. And that's part of what we're doing with Air Raid 3.0. And that's really the thesis of what this kind of evolution is all about, is giving you a chance to get more first downs and score more touchdowns. So I hope this has been helpful, and I hope that gives you a little bit better of a feel of what we're trying to do with the Air Raid 3.0.